Well, good everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Free Thought Profit Podcast. I am Seamus, and he is, of course, uh, the controversial. Uh, well, I just keep running out of things. Uh, he eats. Uh, what does he eat? He eats peanut butter and jellyfish for breakfast. He's John Hamill. There you go. How's it going, Seamus? How are you keeping? Pretty good, pretty good. On the Guinness, so I can't complain. Good, 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 good. Um, so we're going to have uh, some fun today because we're going to talk with um, Corey from the Skeptical Leftist uh, podcast. Is that the full title? It's a bit longer than that, really, is it? Uh, the Mind of a Skeptical Leftist. The Mind of a Skeptical Leftist. Um, <clears throat> so I think... Um, uh, I've mentioned this more than once in the podcast that my absolute favorite question uh, across all episodes was your uh, paraplegic Nazi question to Dan Arrell. So I will not let Corey go without putting that to him, given that he comes from a similar uh, political perspective. Um, so this should be uh, good fun. Getting too much mileage out of my banter. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um Okay, so uh, let's get Corey. Cool. Welcome to the Free Thought Prophet, Corey Johnson. Thanks, Thanks for having so me. much for doing this, Corey. It's much appreciated. And uh, yeah, we have a big bunch of questions we're hoping to ask you about the mind of a skeptical leftist. <laughs> um, so that will be fun. Uh, just before we come on to that, do, do you mind if I ask a little about your own background personally? Did, did you have a a religious upbringing that you somehow had to find your way out of, or, or were you spur spared that particular chore? I was mostly spared that. Um, I guess my my grandparents they, they took us to church when we were little. Uh, my my father actually, uh, when I was a teenager, my father and stepmom both uh, they joined like Amway. So in Amway, there's lots of religious services and there's lots of religious uh -huh. discussion. And, uh, of course it's uh, a lot of nonsense, but, uh, yeah. So, but uh, on my, my mother's side, we didn't do much in the way of religion at all. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then as I got older, I obviously, I, I became farther and farther away from it more and more of an atheist or a mm -hmm. non-believer. And then, uh, my, as a, when I was an adult, then of course my parents, they they grabbed onto religion even more, so <laughs> that makes sense. And 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 when you said your uh, your grandparents brought you to church, was that a, a Christian church, Corey? Yeah, it would have been. Uh, I guess it's a Protestant church, the the United Church of Canada. So uh -huh. uh, yeah, and I guess I I shouldn't gloss over it too much. But my when I was a teenager living with my parents, they did like that Amway stuff had a lot of impact on our home life too they had mm -hmm. like uh we used to do chores around their house and we'd get paid for them and they would automatically mm -hmm. tithe 10 percent and send that to uh robert Schuler and the crystal cathedral <laughs> so okay so there was religion there all the time but i was never really a believer i don't think <laughs> Do you mind sharing a few words about Amway real quick uh, for those that don't know? I mean, outside of the, uh, <laughs> the well, Bob and Tob uh, morning show did a, a skit where they're like, uh, what was it? The two companies are forming uh, North Forkin and Amway. So, you know, yeah, I could get it to you, <laughs> North Forkin Way, man. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, with at the risk of being sued, uh, Amway is a huge con. <laughs> that funnels <laughs> money up to uh, those uh, at the top who started the company, and it's just like any other multi-level marketing situation, right? They, they, uh, they, the whole business premise is recruitment, and you get money, and you're supposed to buy a certain number of products, and the co the commission for that funnels up to the uh, higher levels. Okay. So. Pyramid. <laughs> yes uh, something it's got a, it's got a peak on the top yeah on <laughs> yeah. scheme for jesus <laughs> yeah that's right uh, and we'll, we'll come on to the uh we'll come on to the podcast shortly uh cory i can't uh i can't avoid asking is that the anarchist flag behind you it is so yep that's right <laughs> uh, 
The, so I, I, I'm absolutely not an expert in this area. Please correct me if I say anything profoundly uh, ignorant. Um, but uh, I mean, the, the, the kind of uh, dictionary definition of uh, anarchy in terms of um, total absence of control and things like that um, uh, is the political philosophy of anarchism uh, along those lines, or is there is there a bit more nuance to it? Well, there's certainly a bit more nuance, but yeah, I mean, <clears throat> fundamentally, it means no rulers, right? Like we don't have uh, hierarchy, or like there shouldn't be uh, anyone who dictates to others how to live. <laughs> okay. So that, that does. Um... Does that mean uh, no dictator or does that mean uh, no government and no police? Well, I would I would say no police, but uh, mm. you it depends on how you define government, right? Uh, okay. A lot of anarchists uh, like myself, we advocate for much smaller communities with kind of a direct democracy for decision making. And mm -hmm. like uh, and as a community, we would decide on certain things, rules to live by, but it wouldn't come from on high. Like it wouldn't come from the top, uh, mm -hmm. in a representative democracy, like we have in Canada, often it's, uh, it's framed as though it's like that. Right. Mm -hmm. But, but then we'll vote for someone and they'll be doing something that's totally the opposite of what we wanted. <laughs> sure. So, so with a direct, I mean, a direct democracy, obviously, depend there's various ways of implementing that as well things like rank choice and and uh yeah. proportional proportional representation and what have you uh but uh yeah it's there's nuance it's a complex political philosophy <laughs> yeah the uh i think you're right the um the the kind of direct uh, democracy model has a lot to be said for it um, in terms of a lot of decisions that government would make independently at the minute maybe uh, given technology has advanced uh, to the point where taking a vote on things doesn't necessarily need to cost many millions it could be done quickly and easily yeah uh, so m maybe there's more to be said for that um, well, I, the, I just... the idea of no police sounds a little scary though I have to say <laughs> well that's because the world we live in is is one that is set up so that uh, uh, the police have been put in a role to cover a lot of things that they really aren't, they shouldn't cover, right? So uh, it, one could even say like we would have uh, a community policing of sorts where like on occasion, various individuals would have to make sure that there was security happening and our, our communities were safe. Uh, but they wouldn't be necessarily because in an anar in an anarchist society, we wouldn't have property in the same way. And we wouldn't have like this kind of hierarchical dynamic that we currently have where some people have nothing and some people have everything. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a so matter what, of <laughs> what about the, the kind of canonical case then where, um, uh, Wherever I'm sleeping with my wife and kids, um, if, if we take as a given that there are assholes in the world and sometimes those assholes are going to break into your house. Um, so, yeah, and I, some asshole breaks into my house. Uh, who am I going to phone? Uh, well, uh, I mean, you would phone whoever. Like, you would phone somebody for help in the same way that many communities currently don't phone the police. They instead phone their neighbors or their friends and those are the people that would come to help uh, because the police often are not there to help in the moment. They often get ha have to come after the fact and try to de decide who gets punished and, and where who, who gets charged, right? Yeah. The, the, so, the, the difficulty of that, Corey, is um, I could phone my neighbor, but my neighbor is one of the assholes. So um, <laughs> <laughs> that leaves well, me in a difficult position. Yeah, yeah, I think I think there's much to be said about like uh, w how we get to a society where we have no police, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because the goal is no police or or very little community within security within the community. But first, we have to eliminate a lot of other problems. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, apologies for um, uh, jumping down that rabbit hole <laughs> so early, but uh, that's no uh, that's that's interesting to know. Um, every day is a school day. <laughs> yeah. It was triggered by the flag, apparently, in the background. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's a it's a big part of uh, my show, actually. Like we talk about anarchism all the time. I am, interview various uh, people who know way more than I do about anarchism and uh, what the state is and what the role of the state is and and uh, the role of police and how that has gone wrong in various cases. Well, uh, as far as the podcast goes, what made you decide to do it and uh, what uh, what is the actual basis of the show? Well, uh, uh, I started off uh, with the Brainstorm podcast, actually. Like back in 2013, mm. I ran the Brainstorm podcast and that was an atheist-based show with a, a bent towards scientific skepticism. And so that show uh, eventually ended. It grew as I grew in my, uh, in my perspective and changed in my, uh, my philosophies. But eventually it ended because life does that. And, but I still have that scientific skepticism as a basis for how I examine the world and examine mm -hmm. facts. So it's very important to me that I'm progressive and looking at things from a leftist perspective, but also with a, a an eye towards skepticism and evidence-based uh, thinking. That makes sense. Um, and uh, the term uh, leftism then, uh, I mean, I have to say personally, I think it's uh, lost a lot of its meaning, <laughs> the old uh, left, right, divide doesn't seem to be as clear cut um as it used to be uh i, I blame in large part the americans for getting the colors wrong uh red <laughs> is the color of the leftist party everywhere yeah. in the world apart from america uh but uh yeah i, I mean uh, aside from that how, how do you understand the term uh cory or, do, or do, you, do you think it's less useful than it used to be uh it's certainly less useful than it used to be uh, but I do, I do still think there's certain lines like, um, uh, like leftism in general has a certain kind of social progressivism to it or, mm. uh, or economic progressivism to it where, where we, we feel like, I think less people should be suffering than currently are. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And, and it seems like, and I, I don't want to straw man anybody, but it seems like people on the right are perfectly fine with some people suffering as long as rigid hierarchies are maintained, as long as the rules that they believe in are maintained. So <laughs> I think that's kind of where I draw the lines is, I mean, if you want to assign political parties to it, I mean, I would say that leftists... Yeah, that's, that's definitely uh, the, a problem right now in America. Yeah. I mean, so. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would say even like leftists are, are left of uh mainstream de democrats right like i would call them a kind of a centrist type right mm -hmm. yeah i mean uh so, some of the problems leftists uh face is the neoliberalism of kind of hijacked the democratic party here in america uh, yeah you see that being a, a major problem uh and also do you see that in canada as well absolutely yeah like uh, in Canada, we do have a few more parties that are viable for uh, one to vote for. Like we do actually have a, a green party that has not, well, and, and our system is slightly different, right? Right. We don't have a, a, a vote, a winner take all type uh, situation. We have more like uh, we vote for a represent representative. They go to the parliament and then they represent us, but they happen to belong to a party. Mm -hmm. So you can have a green party representative and they can go to parliament and they can do a fine job <laughs> but, and still win their riding, right? Or re win their region. Yeah. But uh, our green party's uh, in government at the minute in Ireland, actually. But Oh, um, nice. Anyway, sorry, I interrupted you. No, well, that's right. Nice for some people, I suppose. <laughs> uh, they, they, they get um, uh, they get made fun of a lot, a lot. Corey, so um, I, I remember when the pandemic started, the leader of the Green Party in Ireland made a speech in our parliament 
uh, in which he proposed that the government should give a window box to every household in the country because when the supermarkets start running out of food then everyone will have enough greens to keep them going uh, that they've grown in their window box okay well um, i mean i can see so, why they may, got made fun of <laughs> <laughs> yes um, <laughs> They're, uh, they're sometimes they're the kind of stereotypical, um, you know, eating tomatoes while cycling to work, uh, wearing sandals. Um, <laughs> if, 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 if you, uh, yeah, if you, if you produce the most outrageous parody of a Green Party politician, there's, <laughs> there's an Irish version that looks pretty much like that, I think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's, I mean, I can't say too bad, too much, because our Green Party is similar to that. Like, uh, okay. uh, they have, they have serious candidates, but they have mm. candidates who are also like that. Like, where, like, sure, you kind of, okay, uh, maybe <laughs> pull your head a little out of your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. more than others. <laughs> But yeah. Um, so I think in, in general, Corey, it is true, like from uh, polling and uh, from all the data that's available, that um, atheists tend to skew left or liberal or progressive or whatever uh, kind of label you want to put on it. Um, but recently in, in the States, especially, there's been a few right of center atheist groups that have sprung up. I have to say, my, my criticism of that was that, I mean, I, I would prefer to be in an atheist group that didn't care what your politics was. It seems to me it's possible to uh, campaign for secularism without being, um, without, you know, without caring what uh, what anyone's economic policies might be. <laughs> uh, but uh, how, how do you say this kind of, uh, this kind of divide? Uh, do you think there's a place for explicitly left-wing and explicitly right-wing atheist groups i think i think you have to have that actually if you're gonna okay. uh, yeah because unfortunately things like racism are addressed in more uh humanist groups or leftist groups more so than they are in right-wing groups and and if if you want your atheism to be inclusive then I'm afraid you're going to have to deal with various forms of like, you're going to have to deal with people being racist. So you're going to have to make your group so that it is let and more inclusive and less racist. <laughs> Stuff okay. like that. So um, let, let me play devil's advocate then because uh, where we have maybe a uh, right of center people uh, watching, um, I'll, I'll I'll try and represent their typical response to a comment <laughs> like that. <clears throat> so um, I think you mentioned that uh, people who are right of center are more comfortable with um, suffering in society, and uh, it, you also that seem is to what apply... it seems to me. <laughs> okay, so you you also seem to apply there that they're more comfortable with racism. Yep. Um, yep. So uh, I think. People who are economically conservative uh, would probably say that they're just as opposed to racism as you are, and that um, they're just as see a society where everyone flourishes as you are, but they have different ideas about how to get from here to there, and reasonable people can differ uh, on these issues and sure. there's you know there's not one source of truth and the pushback would be that um your critique of their position uh, isn't really criticizing their position at all it's just mind reading them and uh, imputing moral flaws uh into their motivations sure uh i think it's fair to say that i may not know each person individually right and, and what their motivations are but mm. what i can do is i can look at the effects of certain economic uh policies and when those policies are hurting uh say 
the majority of uh, people of color uh, in the U.S., black people in Canada, many indigenous people uh, are harmed by economic policies that are in, put in place by right wing governments uh, or or centrist governments. I don't want to give like our liberal party a pass or the Democrats a pass because many of their policies also harm marginalized folks. But uh, but looking at those policies, they have a racial impact. And that may not mean that an individual economic right leaning person is racist, but it does imply that they're okay with those people not getting what they need. Well, uh, one of the pushbacks there would be to say, um, if, for example, the Democratic Party aren't sufficiently left wing, um, and all of their proposed policies cause all these harms, then which is the uh, government in the world that has implemented um, these wonderful left-wing policies you would propose and arrived at a nirvana for all? <laughs> well, I mean, framed the way it's framed, nobody. <laughs> But that doesn't mean we can st we we should stop trying, right? Uh, I I would say that we we can see the flaws in our system and try to fix them and try to work towards a better society, regardless of the fact that other other groups have done this badly or various people have done uh, uh, made errors along the way or uh, and just to throw it out there, obviously like Stalinist Russia was a bad place. <laughs> No, <laughs> I don't think that's a hot that's take. A mighty brave shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it, believe it or not, if you had some of the conversations I have, it, it you okay. well, might actually see Fair that enough. as a, a brave stance. <laughs> I might lose followers from that. <laughs> but well, how about uh, how about somewhere like, um, let's say Venezuela? Uh, where they I, implemented quite far left policies relatively recently. Well, I think I think Venezuela is uh, Venezuela is a country that has a lot of nuance to it, right? Like there was under uh, Hugo Chavez, there was a lot of good policies implemented, but also it left a lot of the power in the top uh, in a certain small group of hands, which is as an anarchist, antithetical to my own personal beliefs. Uh, it, it, but also <laughs> that's what happens when uh, you have governments, state states, governments like the, the type that uh, Venezuela had or has uh, often tends to corrupt even the, the best of intentions. Uh, but as far as atheist groups go, <laughs> right. right. We're getting a little far afield. Yeah, you're <laughs> it's all good. I'm just trying to maybe bottle it a little bit uh, because I mean, we have groups that aren't explicitly left-leaning, at least they don't advertise right. as such, but then when it comes down to it, they do kind of lead or skew more to that side. I mean, uh, American atheists, I mean, they're a lot of their mission statements, I wouldn't say, are necessarily left, but they've definitely reacted. Uh, I would use a term "overly woke" uh, at times. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh, so what? You know, what's really the the right center here? I mean, atheism isn't necessarily about any of these issues that we're even talking about. It just well, about, it's just yeah. about the, the God problem, right? Yeah. <laughs> Right, so, the actual being an atheist is is a pretty straightforward thing. It mm -hmm. doesn't have a left mm -hmm. or a right, but uh, because we're all people and <laughs> we all live within right. the world, <laughs> we're going to get stuck in various things. Um, and I mean, I encountered this a lot when I was in atheist uh, communities more because I've kind of pulled myself out. Um, I encountered a lot of situations where people of color were being shut down or uh, uh, LGBTQIA folks have been shut down or, uh, or even like even an ostensibly quote unquote woke uh, community like the atheist community of Austin 
uh, and uh, they had a, a controversy over a video uh, by a YouTuber that I can't remember who was discussing trans women in sports and uh, reality rational rules. Rationality rules. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So so these controversies they they come up because uh, sometimes people are uh, feeling feel attacked by other members in the community because we all have opinions that extend beyond atheism. <laughs> yeah, I think that community or that particular group is uh, the ACA, right? They're having some issues now with uh, Matt. Could Dillon. be, yeah, so, could be. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, it, it's it's been that. I mean, that was two two years ago, three years ago that that R- rationality rules video came out, and that was all that stuff went going on. So, yeah, mm-hmm. so, uh, <laughs> shows how out of touch I am with the atheist community, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> You, you dropped something on me just now. What, what's what's the, the letters now? It's LGBT. LGBTQIA plus. Okay, I gotta fire my son. Uh, thank you, Chef. So LGBTQ, right? Yeah. And then Inter- I is for intersex, and okay. A for asexual, or agender. And then plus is just in case we forgot something. Yep. yep. Okay. <laughs> Which uh, my friend uh, David, he often says we should just call it the gender and sexually diverse community, which is much easier. <laughs> Something short. That's you gotta, <laughs> you know. Come on, brevity, guys, brevity. You know. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I feel like I'm gonna get shot every time I leave a letter off. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I don't mean it. I think you're still okay yeah. just going with LGBT, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I I. I kid my, my 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 son's part of the community i always tease him like you get a vote you know you, you call in and say no 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 i don't want to prove that a letter that you know no so yeah. <laughs> i suppose it's probably more decentralized than that right <laughs> each individual community would defi- yeah. decide for themselves yeah for any time somebody brings up the gay agenda i'm like is this really on the gay agenda do, do we need to ask this out you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, in in terms of some of the the previous guests that we've had, uh, Corey from um, I don't know if hard left would be the right description. Um, we uh, we had Dan Arrow uh, on I the podcast. Um, so uh, I I don't know how. Yeah, uh, I, I don't want to put any labels on Dan that he wouldn't be comfortable with. Um. But we had him on to, to discuss um, Antifa or Antifa or whatever they're called these days that he was kind of uh, <laughs> aligned with at the time. There you go. <clears throat> um, so uh, that episode really sticks in my mind because um, I think Seamus asked the greatest question in the history of our podcast. Uh, so uh, Dan was defending the punch a Nazi uh, position. Okay. Um, if you um, if you come across someone in the street who's propo- uh, proposing neo-Nazi perspectives, then it's a good idea to punch them in the face. And um, I think we were both pushing back along the lines of, you know, <clears throat> those views are extremely objectionable, but words are words and violence is violence. And, and really, um, uh, uh, yeah. The, the, the letter the scarlet letter on somebody that's not so to speak right that's yeah, right exactly. that's right uh but anyway what what um uh D- dan's view of the world was those ju- those views are um so objectionable that just saying the words just promoting the ideas just um shouting the slogans uh even if you're not engaging in violence um then you can expect to be punched in the face if dan arnold's around uh so uh, Seamus asked Dan, um, what if it was a paraplegic uh, neo-Nazi? Uh, if there was a paraplegic neo-Nazi promoting uh, neo-Nazi views, would you punch them in the face? And Dan's <laughs> view was yes, definitely. Okay. Uh, so um, uh, let, let, let me ask you the, the same question. Corey, <laughs> if, if, if you came across a paraplegic Nazi, would you A, punch them in the face, uh, B, <laughs> Only punch them in the face if it was a Nazi with two arms and two legs, 
or C, call the cops? <laughs> well, I wouldn't call the cops. <laughs> so, so that only leaves two other options, I guess. <laughs> okay. But no, I, I, uh, I am not, I tend not to be a very violent person. I, I prefer to only defend uh, people if they're being attacked physically. Uh, if someone's using words, then I will try to use words to uh, defend others. But I love watching Nazis get hit, and <laughs> and I am not going to and I am not going to condemn anyone who does such a thing. <laughs> so I don't know if that 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 may be that may be a coward's way out. Actually, that might be uh, saying, well, uh, "Go ahead and okay. punch Nazis," but I'm not going to do it. Uh, maybe I should be more brave and actually just <laughs> given given it's my favorite uh, my favorite question in the entire history of this uh, podcast, Corey. Let, let me ask you a follow up. Oh boy. Um, do you only uh, do you only enjoy watching Nazis get hit if they have two arms and two legs, or would you also enjoy watching a paraplegic <laughs> Nazi get punched in the face? Uh, no, I think I think that watching a paraplegic get hit in the face would really be it would be a distasteful, I think, is, is probably the easiest way oh, to do that. Oh, there we've got it. <laughs> I don't. Cor Corey comes out in favor of paraplegic <laughs> Nazis. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I wouldn't even uh, say that that paraplegic Nazi, the, the hypothetical paraplegic <laughs> Nazi, should even lose his benefits or her benefits or or their I, benefits. I, I, I don't know. I don't know, Corey. I think you may be. Big, in big trouble at Anarchist Club. Um, <laughs> we've, we've now outed you as a pro paraplegic Nazi. <laughs> yeah, you got you trapped me. <laughs> I think we, 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 uh, we've really identified a niche in this podcast. Uh, Shame, I said, I don't know if any other podcast is covering issues to do with paraplegic Nazis. This is true. This is true. <laughs> I don't. I don't. It's interesting to think, would there be a paraplegic Nazi? Because part of the whole Nazi thing is fitness, Ooh. right? The uh, the whole, if you're not mm -hmm. fit, then you're not part of us. Uh, I, have the I have the best genes ever. Different right. Types. I mean, sometimes you didn't look the, at some of the, the examples. And the, it's not the Holocaust <laughs> targeted disabled people, didn't it? Yes. Uh, yeah, I think I'm right, right in saying that. Yeah. Yeah, it, they were. You, were. you know where that started, though? Good old USA, baby. Of course. Yep. <laughs> yep. The, the eugenics and stuff was eugenics, all started. Here. Okay. Yep. It was all started mm -hmm. here, plus bathhouses, because we had bathhouses at the border for whenever uh, Mexican Im immigrants would come over, not only just to immigrate, but daily workers. Yeah. And they would have to go through a bathhouse. Both of those things inspired uh, Hitler. In fact, Hitler mentioned um, some of the eugenic scientists in Mein Kampf and awarded them medals. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, Nazi think tank, America, yeah, yeah, that's it. So, uh, so what you're saying is, Seamus, if <clears throat> if we identify a paraplegic Nazi, then we can <laughs> um, we can conclude that our our Nazi groups have become more progressive in the last fifty years. Right. That they hey. now... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> progress, progress among our Nazis to be celebrated. <laughs> Real progress, I, I... Be top of Nazis, <laughs> but you know. Uh, I, I take what you get, I guess. I don't know. Progress and Nazi. That doesn't really seem to go together very well. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call it a small win, Corey. Maybe <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's right. yeah, and I like Dan, but uh, he, he, uh, I mean, it was, it was a pretty uh, engaging conversation we had. But uh, yeah, I enjoyed that a lot. But the, uh, the thing on Twitter is what ended up getting uh, me blocked by him. Oh, is that uh, right? So yeah, I've, I've been during the Me Too movement, and he put, uh, and John, you can correct me because I think you see, saw this too. Uh, he put, believe no, uh, believe all women no matter what. And he no more and tweeted it. And like the first tweet was a woman that said, Dan L raped me and he has a tiny penis. <laughs> <laughs> and and because I'm an That's asshole. Top quality trolling. You have to say and that. Because, yeah, because I'm an trolling. asshole. I said, I said, hey, Dan, just call her an Aussie and you can punch her. And he blocked me. 
That's, you yeah. know, yeah, I guess. So. Yep. I understand why he blocked you. I admit it is a joke. Come on. You know. Yeah, it's a... I mean, it, it is a thing, right? Like, it's it's hard to... If you if you want to talk about me too a little bit, like oh, uh, yeah, believing true. women is vital to the the well being and of victims, and often victims are uh, uh, not believed, and many of the persecutors, uh, like the rapists, don't get uh, charged or in it, or or they don't find any justice in any way, and it's it's a hard balance to strike, right? Like it's it's a question that society is always going to have to deal with no matter what we do, we're always going to be having to try and get the most justice in the best way possible. Well, don't, don't plan on punching me. Okay. <laughs> I'm a former, former law enforcement officer. Okay. I'm oh, happy, geez. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm happy not to do that. Either, okay? Just relax. Uh, but uh, I, you know, my thing with that, and it's just from expert, cause I did work some of those cases. I believe nobody. Okay, yeah. I I I will just you know let everybody talk. I will, but I will take everybody at least. I I will at least listen and take every everything that they say seriously. Well, but it doesn't mean I'm going to believe them. You know what I mean? If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, okay. and there's I think there's a balance there too. Like, uh, there's a difference between me as a person seeing a claim on the internet from a victim and sure. a law enforcement having to balance the uh, weight of evidence versus uh, whether or not it will be prosecuted versus whether or not it will actually be result in a conviction of any kind. Like there's, there's real things that have to be figured out there. But uh, I thought you were opposed to law enforcement. Balancing oh, I am. The weight of evidence. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not opposed to evidence. <laughs> so, but, uh, but even if you say like, uh, we're going to in, in utopia, sure. we're going mm-hmm. to have, uh, no police, but we are going to have uh, some somebody rapes someone else. And it, it's something we don't really understand because we don't deal with it regularly. And we're still going to have to figure out a way to discuss that, to learn who did what and how to deal with the person who is considered either guilty or, you know, or lying. I, I wouldn't want to say that somebody's lying, but uh, well, people do lie. Um, yeah, both absolutely. Sides, uh, both sides of it. You know what I mean? People love it. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 the, we had one case that the woman absolutely lied. And uh, it was just by happenstance. And I'll try to keep this short because uh, I don't like telling stories and telling them long either. But basically, she phoned it in that this had occurred. And I just got like the, the bits and pieces of it. And I know we're hung up, said something to the guy that was next to me, didn't say anything else about it he calls his buddy his, excuse me his buddy works with the guy and he was able to confirm when the guy was working and then it, this is whenever she was claiming that this occurred oh okay and here, the backstory was they had a kid and they were in family court and this was her way to get the kid yeah like so, those cases yeah. definitely still happen right yeah and whenever yeah. i went to the prosecutor uh because i figured well because i knew how the prosecutor would be or at least i don't take that back i was suggested to go to the prosecutor and before I even talked to her, uh, except for the phone interview, because well, that's there's reasons for that. But anyways, basically, he said, well, we need to kind of let her know before you go further, because we'd have to charge her. Mm-hmm. So she files a complaint and it's false. Right, right. Yeah. So, yeah, ba- basically nothing happened. So but, no matter. Know, I yeah. got screwed yeah. because of that, you know, and it's, you know, if you're no matter what society you're you're looking at you are always going to have cases where you have to balance and find you know the truth of a situation and you're going to have to balance the impact to the accused versus the impact to the accuser and that's just how we're always going to have that so. yeah but i mean for for us in the uh the trial by media or however you want to say it i mean it's it is kind of rough i mean uh you look at the bill cosby situation you know, you look at um, uh, who's the quarterback, uh, Watson, who uh, was with uh, the Texans, and now he's with the Cleveland Browns, right? I'm not sure that these... story, yeah. Okay, so there was like 40 women that were claiming they were like masseuse 
Uh, oh, yeah. He would, yeah, basically take advantage of him one on one whenever he was getting a massage. Uh, there was. Uh, That's quite a few. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, and like six went to a grand jury, and this took over a year. So he sat out of like sort of voluntarily, so they didn't discipline him. Okay. Which, there's a yeah. There's a lot of controversy about that. But anyways, so after the grand jury came forward and says, okay, we don't have enough to go forward on, then he was traded and he was signed with all this money. And then, but there's a civil lawsuit going through with 20 women. And then now just, uh, I think it was Friday, there was another grand jury that came down, but then they decided that. So it's like, what do you do? You know, did this, is this guy really out here doing things or is this all just a big misunderstanding? You know, well, I mean, I mean obviously playing, playing it's hard NFL, to, you know? It's it's easy for me to just not say to say like oh I don't care about the NFL so sure. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about There's that. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, for somebody who's a fan of the team he's on, sure. It, it, it's it, I I mean they have to make those calls for themselves, right? Like, um, it seems to me like that twenty or forty women coming forward seems like pretty pretty. I we talk about evidence and. My cat's being a jerk. Okay. <laughs> you sure we can get attacked. You know. <laughs> yeah. My, we talk about evidence and whether we like it or not, witnesses are a type of evidence. Mm -hmm. And 40 witnesses saying similar things, that's a, that's pretty significant. I don't want to, <laughs> you know, it's maybe not enough to condemn a guy in a court of law. But What was it, it uh, Chappelle said about the Cosby? Like whatever, twenty or thirty women came out. He was like, "Oh, come on, come on!" Then six, he's like, "Shit, this guy might have raped somebody." <laughs> it's like, it's like, yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's baby. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, l l l let me give you a reaction uh, to the uh, the kind of no cop utopia thing, Corey. Oh. Because when you say you know when when we get the utopia and there's no cops. Um, I mean that doesn't sound like utopia to me. So uh, <laughs> you can you can discuss the various hard cases, and I think in every country, I mean obviously there's no police force that's perfect. There's some systems that are better than others. There's always improvements that you can make, but one pretty constant seems to be that in any society, no matter how rich or poor, there's a reliable non zero proportion of people who are assholes and <laughs> sociopaths and assholes are always going to be assholes and um what a, a society with no police force to me just means that assholes get everything they want and everyone else gets their tv nicked the question is though like where do assholes come from like are assholes just genetically assholes or is there a reason they're an asshole yes like there, so, there are so uh, yes, there are there are people who are sociopaths. Yes, agreed. And you're going to have to find a way to deal with that in a society. That's uh, yes, maybe, maybe you know, um, get a bunch of people to wear the same uniform. Maybe we give them nope. a badge. <laughs> but we know that that doesn't actually solve the problem, right? We know. Well, that it definitely mitigates it. It, it actually it, it, doesn't. It actually but, doesn't. No, it does. Ninety percent. No. So here's how it mitigates it. If, if, if you if, if you have an <laughs> asshole who walks around stabbing people, and uh, the cops arrest him and put him in jail, he will reliably reduce the rate at which he stabs people if he's locked up in the penitentiary. In that one case, yes. But well, yeah. Uh, if you have lots of assholes, then statistically, you know, we have less assholes, and funding for police has gone down in many cases and it's not it's not that they're they're correlated it, you can't say that more police equals less crime right this like there's many yeah, many you, books you out can. here that there's many books that reliably back up the statement that more police doesn't equal less crime but didn't didn't we have exactly this experiment recently in the states where we went through this whole big campaign of defund the police and then city after city, every time they reduced <laughs> the funding of the police, but they reduced the number of cops, <laughs> the crime went up. That's a myth. They have, 
the crime rates haven't actually gone up dramatically. And none of those places actually reduced funding. They might have reduced the increases that those police stations get each year because police stations, police forces get so reliably like, have increased every, funding every, every single year. Is it, is it not the case? Uh, maybe, maybe this is just kind of fake news or whatever, but is it not the case that uh, homicide rates, for example, uh, increased substantially in very many cities last year? In, in some cities it did, but there's an, a, a variety of reasons for that, and very few of them had anything to do with the police. The, the police funding still maintained at the levels they were at or got higher. Mm. So it, ha- it wasn't that the police increasing their, their uh, force actually did the, any, made any difference. But it, it seems to be um, that the Ferguson effect was a big part of it. The, the, I, the Ferguson effect being um, when there's a lot of attention on a case like uh, George Floyd, uh, in which, um, I mean, the man was clearly murdered and it's uh, right and proper that the, uh, the Derek Chauvin was convicted of murder. Um, but given all of the attention on the police, Lots of cops just didn't want to engage for fear of um, being kind of tarred with. Um, yeah, well, uh, I mean, you can imagine. <laughs> but then, doesn't well, that mean that they're not actually doing their job that they're getting paid for? So then, what are we paying for them anyway? Like, well, uh, <laughs> like the, that's uh, that's actually self-refuting for the police force. No, I think it's a, it's a, I don't think it reflects the well on the police, um, the the Ferguson effect thing. I'm not saying that's uh, a good thing. Um, so yeah, I, I agree with that point. But um, what I'm saying is, it does uh, it, it it does suggest that once you remove policing from an area, crime is going to go up. I, I mean, if that wasn't the case then CHOP or CHAZ or whatever it was called in uh, Seattle or Portland or whatever it was. I mean, that, that would have been uh, the crime-free utopia with no cops. Well, uh, I mean, we have to remember like that we're <laughs> they're also still living within the society and being uh, having outside forces pushed upon them. Like, um, you can't say, pull all the police out of a a community that currently has a high crime rate and just expect the crime rate to go to zero, right? You're still going to have the exact same forces, the economic situation and the variety of problems that were existed the day before. That's why defund the police isn't just about removing all police tomorrow. It's about a process of taking money out of extra policing and putting it into programs that will help the people that are affected. Uh, okay, well, that, I mean, that's um, that's certainly one suggestion around um, moving funding away from law enforcement into social care to deal with, for example, cases of mental illness. Uh, but yeah, there, there, there were some... There were some people in the recent defund the police campaign who said that, who said really what this means is kind of shifting funding from police to mental health professionals and things like that. But actually, there were a lot of people who said, no, we want to take all the police away, uh, which seems to be your well, preferred approach to I mean, my, my, my preferred world has no police, but I'm under no illusions that we can do that tomorrow. <laughs> like, so so there there's a world of difference between a, where i want the world to be and where we are and there's a lot okay. of processes that we uh, have can, to can i work guess on. Uh, w- w- when i asked about this kind of uh left-wing utopia uh where where has this been tried and been successful um uh as as i understand it your response was along the lines of well no country has tried it yet uh, and if I if I ask the same question about um, removing the police, uh, can uh, is there any country where uh, where having well, no law enforcement uh, can be demonstrated to be a good idea? 
the same, the same, <laughs> every single suburban area in the entire <laughs> North America, <laughs> like actually, uh, police are, are primarily focused in, uh, like, uh, downtown core areas, high, heavily populated with, uh, low income earners. Uh, so suburban where, areas where most of the crimes are, <laughs> well, there's there's also a, a, a influence of over policing, and again, when you have low income areas, that's l- low income means people are in dire need, right? That means they have and crime is a by and large a product of economic material conditions. So, so you have you have areas all over the United States where the police aren't there, and they have the odd crime that the, somebody has to come in and deal with. But also, like, uh, if you want a more uh, specific thing, like Rojava has a kind of a community policing system. They don't have a police force. They have a system where everybody, it, because they're such a small region and they are constantly under attack from outside forces, they also have everybody in their community is in the military. So they do have <laughs> they do have cases where this they is, have this is the utopia everyone's in the army. <laughs> if I have to defend my community, I will. Right, like that's the thing. <laughs> Was it that uh, okay. kind of requirement though in a lot of uh, nations? I mean, I think uh, Russia did. I don't know if they still do, but uh, you had to serve yeah. X years. Yeah. In the There's lots of places. Israel does that. Uh, yes. Like Switzerland, I think. Germany, uh, as far as I know, Sweden, maybe there's lots. Yeah, of lots of lots of countries have compulsory military service. I'm not a I'm not a big fan of the uh, the uh, for the compulsory military service, but if necessary, I would go through a training and I would defend my community, and I'd be more inclined to do so if everybody within my community was getting what they needed to survive, and it wasn't people also within my community who were taking it from them. Okay, so (laughs) I guess listeners are encouraged not to worry (laughs) when the police force disappears because Corey's getting an assault rifle. (laughs) (laughs) Well, so far that's not, it's really not happening here. (laughs) Or get your own. (laughs) Guinness, that sounds even worse. Yeah, because uh, one thing, though, and, you know, a lot of people have kind of made fun of this, though, is that all summer leading until uh, Biden took office was this big push for this kind of defund the police uh, or restructure or whatever you want to say uh, the actual you know plan was. Uh, my understanding is he's given more money and more uh, military influence to uh, police departments than any president before him so well and and he also decided to put a bunch of uh groups on uh terrorist uh lists and uh anarchists and and left-wing black lives matter protesters are are, uh, among the potential uh terrorists so the word of the proud boys and you know those folks yeah yeah they're on there too but apparently you know (laughs) I don't know if that should be the same. <laughs> I don't well, think it should be. At least, but... at least, I mean, you know, I, I understand. It, no offense, but I mean, there, there, there's some problems with Antifa, and there's some problems with, with Black Lives Matter. Okay, every group has their own. Problem. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. That's okay, right. uh, but just, uh, just for the record, though, if yeah. if if my neighbor decides that he doesn't want to have anything to do with the cops and he's going to get himself an assault rifle, rifle and sort it out himself, then I absolutely want him on somebody's list. <laughs> <laughs> well i'm sure that uh, yeah. there's lots of neighbors around that uh we would all want uh, on somebody's Dude. list if they did that uh-huh. i live in west virginia okay i mean that's, that's like half the goddamn state actually it's probably like three-fourths of the state <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know yeah. there's a lot of people like we don't believe in calling the cops up here yeah you know we we, we deal with it ourselves so i mean even whenever i w- was a cop and i'd be calling up you know, showing up for a crime that was committed in, you know, this little area, like half people wouldn't talk to you. Well, that's the thing. Like people like, uh, 
our downtown core in, in the city of Regina, where I live, is uh, largely indigenous folks in, and uh, low-income folks. And the police are there almost constantly, whether they're, they're patrolling or what have you. But people who live there never call the police when something happens to them. They either just accept it as a loss or they try to go through neighbors and friends to find a way to uh, get their uh, belongings back or some other way. Like they, they never call the police. And hey, wait a minute, John. You know, all the Irish folk over here, the Irish neighborhoods, <laughs> they never call the police. What the hell? <laughs> They are the police now, aren't they? <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. In some cities, yeah. 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 I mean, you had yeah. you had a freaking police force in uh, Belfast. It was the IRA, wasn't it? I mean, they that's, kind of policed a lot of shit, didn't they? Of that's their... right. Um, they didn't bother with prisons. Um, they yeah. just, uh, yeah. I, I remember one time I was in a bar and um, someone came in to... Um, Typically, what happened would happen with a bunch of guys would come in wearing balaclavas and ski masks, and they would read out a statement and say, "This person is now going to be punished." And uh, at the time, um, uh, the most common punishment was uh, knee capping, and um, so you get one bullet in each knee. <clears throat> yeah, that's. Uh... And uh, the guy um, who was a car thief and apparently knew it was coming. Uh, before he went out the back of the bar, he stood up and took his trousers off so that he didn't get his <laughs> jeans ruined. <laughs> At least he got his oh, jeans were good. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> was it like the, the kind of go to for drug dealers was kneecapping? Was that? Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. Exactly that. Yeah. Wow. Um, but I suppose my problem is if you, if you have a community, um, and there's a problem with, let's say, burglaries because there's uh, a small minority of assholes in the community. And then you say, um, well, let's not phone the cops. Let's just sort of this out among us and we can each get a gun. And if anyone comes uh, yeah. to do anything, then we'll all sort it out between each other. Do you know who's going to be first in line to get the gun? The fucking assholes who do all the burglaries. Well, I mean, I, obviously it's not ideal that people go out and shoot <laughs> someone who's robbing them. Uh, but again, like, I think, I think it's a matter of... You should of... explain that, Corey. The next time someone breaks into your house and points a gun at your head, you should say, this is not ideal. See, the funny thing is, <laughs> I'm 45. I've lived in some pretty shoddy neighborhoods. Never happened. Not once has anybody broke into my house. So... <laughs> This isn't a, surprisingly, despite the way the TV portrays it, crime doesn't happen to everybody all the time. <laughs> so it's not, it's, and actually, like I say, crime rates are actually uh, generally going down. And the, the more society progresses and as people get their material needs met, that tends to improve the situation. There is that. <laughs> okay, understood. Understood. Um, so, let, let, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the uh, the podcast, uh, Corey? What kind of subjects have you covered recently, and what can people expect to be coming up next? Well, well, uh, recent episodes were uh, I did a, a a panel stream with a bunch of uh, leftists from various tendencies, from Marxist Leninists to Democratic Socialists to anarchists. And uh, we discussed the concept of left unity and whether such a thing is uh, possible or whether we should even want it. Um, can you say what episode that is so that the NSA can uh, get you guys all on the fly list? Oh, <laughs> just a sec. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. 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 No, no, it's it's the only, I, I only have two live episodes. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything else is a, a, a numbered episode. So. <laughs> gotcha. The, uh, uh, I did another one where I discussed, uh, uh, the organization Black in, in Sask. Uh, my province is Saskatchewan, and uh, Black in Sask is an organization looking to uh, create, like, do better uh, results for uh, increase equity for uh, Black folks in Saskatchewan. And uh, then I've also had uh, Anarch, the YouTuber. Uh, he's an anarchist, and we talked about what the state is. 
and uh, why we shouldn't want a state, even if we do uh, have a change and removal of capitalism. Um, and, you know, various other things. Uh, upcoming, I'm talking, I talk a lot to uh, anti-racist people. Uh, I'm talking to Tori Williams Douglas from the podcast White Homework. And, uh, and I'm talking to uh, a local podcaster about uh, Saskatchewan history. And it's called Unmaking Saskatchewan is is her podcast. So it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I've been trying to touch a little bit more on local stuff, but also broad concepts, I guess. <laughs> what, what, what do you say Saskatchewan history? What's, uh, what would uh, one expect uh, to hear about there? Uh, the impact of like uh, land ownership, because land ownership is very important in uh, rural Saskatchewan. Um, uh, resource extraction, the concept of land back, which is uh, something that we discuss when we talk about settlers and, and, uh, and indigenous folks. And then, uh, yeah, stuff like that. Nothing about hockey. What the fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> no, no hockey. Uh, <laughs> although I, I think I did recently mention football because we have a Canadian football is different than American football. Sure. Right. right. <laughs> so. Oh, Regina. So that would be, is that not far from Edmonton or what would, what would be your team? We're, we're about eight hours from Edmonton. Okay. Is that be the closest NHL team or? Uh, Winnipeg I, is probably the closest. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Winnipeg uh, is about six hours from us. Are you, are you a fan? Not a fan? No, I, I don't really watch hockey. <laughs> <laughs> All these Canadian guys we talk to. <laughs> you know, I, I, I say, yeah, it's just a waste. I'm telling you. What the hell? Yeah. Uh, I have to uh, tell my favorite Edmonton story, which is oh. um, I have some relatives in Edmonton, uh, Corey, and um, for my day job, I well had customers in Toronto. I used to go to Toronto a lot, and my mother used to tell me every time I told her I was uh, I have to go to Toronto next week, she would say, "Oh, you should go and pop over <laughs> when you're there and see these people in Edmonton." And I actually worked out at one point. Um, when I'm in Toronto, I'm still closer to Dublin than I am to Edmonton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. My my partner is from Burundi, so okay. her, her father is coming to visit us next year, uh -huh. and he says, "Oh well, I'm going to go to Montreal and Toronto and Edmonton and uh, uh, Vancouver." <laughs> and we're like, "Okay, hold on now. Like, you're going to have to plan a long trip for this." <laughs> yes. Where, yes. Where, is your, where are they from? Burundi. Where, That's in, that? in East, yeah, East Africa. Oh, okay. Sorry, never heard of that one. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's it's right beside Rwanda. Okay. <laughs> which everybody remembers because of the genocide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. You know, selective we get involved in, but anyways, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> yeah. Good time. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm keeping an eye on, on the clock here, Corey. But I'm conscious we can't suck up your entire day. Um, but just before we let you go, uh, would you mind reminding people where they can um, stay in touch with you and what you're up to? Um, are you on all of the usual social media platforms? All the usual places. Uh, I, I, t I make videos for all my shows too, so everything's on YouTube. And... Uh... Yeah, my Twitter is at Skeptical Lefty. I follow back any anarchists. And uh, if you seem cool, I'll follow you back too. <laughs> that, that seems like an unanarchist thing to do. Uh, <laughs> and I think anytime anyone follows you, you should just say, fuck you. Uh, you, you, you cannot expect me to follow the rules of this follow back uh, regime. <laughs> I, I recently, I put, the, I put, I follow back anarchists into my, uh, my handle. And so many I rooms got, in these anarchy clubs. <laughs> I got three <laughs> followers who are like these crypto accounts with 26 followers sh sh posting crypto uh, currency stuff. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm Goodness. not following you back. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Awesome. Uh, the crypto stuff is um, oh. everywhere. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't understand it. But um, it's nonsense. It's it's a scam. Yeah. That's why. That's why. Yeah. As as someone who doesn't <laughs> understand it, it just smells like a Ponzi scheme to but me. Matt Damon said it was okay. Oh yeah. Oh, he also grief. said you're not a man if you're not involved in it, right? Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, well, the uh, 
so it, what's, what's one of uh, here? The the sponsors on, on the Formula One teams used to have, you know, Marlboro and all of these uh, cigarette companies, and you're not allowed to do that anymore. Yeah. And I've just just this year, I've I've noticed that there's um there's blockchain and crypto companies written all over all the cars. So. Yeah, of course. Goodness, have plenty of cash to go around uh, for now. Anyway, for now, <laughs> when, <laughs> when, <real money. laughs> when Visa well, is it. telling me a crypto card, then it's not something I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. yeah. Okay, pretty good. Uh, well, listen, that was a whole lot of fun, uh, Corey. We must do it again sometime. Thank you kindly. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks, man. Uh, that was great. Take care, man. All the best. Bye. Bye. So I, I have to say, Seamus, we're we're just dominating this niche. I think uh, anyone uh, anyone interested in uh, the philosophy of paraplegic Nazis uh, really has no other place to go other than um, the free fraud profit. That's where the, the yeah. Well, it, it, all... All started, it all started with uh, Doctor Strange Love, of course. So, you know. Indeed, indeed. Well, he could watch that again recently. Did you really? Well. well do you wonder what what would make you wonder about that? But uh... yeah, yeah. Um, I was re- listening to Dan Carlin uh, history yeah. podcast recently as well uh, for the same reason. Uh, yeah, no, not much fun in the news these days. So um, uh, if Corey wants uh, some anarchy, then he can uh, head to Eastern Ukraine. That looks pretty much like anarchy at the minute. Mm, okay. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that. Moving on. <laughs> uh, the, yeah, that that was a cheap shot. I'm sure Corey would have a, a very coherent and cogent response to my cheap jab there. That's rather unfair. Come on, jeez. <laughs> Naughty me. Naughty me. <laughs> anyway. Uh, okay, that was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, well, I look it, forward we, to catching up with, with Corey again sometime yeah, in the future. Yeah, we must do this. Uh, alrighty, folks. Uh, definitely go check out uh, The Mind of a Skeptical Leftist uh on all the usual spots uh we have given his uh, website well shoot i'm sorry make sure i got it scrolling below well we're talking about it uh and uh hopefully we'll have uh, mr Corey on here again soon uh we're creeping up on a, a big number here john uh we're so number 300 coming up yeah too. yeah and then we're gonna have some stuff after that it's uh big big yeah. guest coming up for episode 300 we should what, keep that top secret for now. For now, for now. Mm. Episode three hundred one will be totally different, though. Mm-hmm. So, yep. Uh, good. Yeah? We good. We're not gonna divulge. We are. No. Okay. <laughs> no. Well, uh, we'll keep it for another time, maybe. All right. All righty, folks. We'll catch y'all here soon. Just remember, free and the thought is gonna give it away, not take it away. Bye, everybody. Bye, folks. <laughs>